All right, so uh, hi everyone. Uh, I'm Benjamin, and this is exploring the debugger protocol for test authoring. Uh, unlike the keynote from the morning, this is a very technical talk. Uh, so a little bit about myself. Uh, so I do a bunch of open source, uh, which those of you who have attended the keynote in the morning heard. And, at my and this is my wife and my dog, uh, whom I love very much. And uh, I work at a place called Testim.io. And uh, t Testim.io, we basically do uh, a lot of really cool uh, stuff for test automation. And uh, I'll, I'll maybe go into this a little in the, in the talk. Uh, and one of the main tools we have is something called the Debugger API. Now, I will show some C++, and I know it's like uh, there will be like some JavaScript, and I know like web developers, at least in web development conferences, get really scared when they see C++. And I think it's justified because the tooling is a little scary sometimes for uh, developers, but I promise the actual code itself we'll see is not uh, too complicated. And the code ahead has been modified a little for brevity. I actually got there by taking the actual C++ code from Chrome and modifying things a little so it's clear. And, uh, but it's, it's, it's the same code, I just didn't want to have like 40 lines uh, in the slide. Right, so who here has seen uh, this uh, screen with the DevTools? Right, so I, s I think that uh, almost everyone. So you do, uh, you type console.log hello world and then you press uh, enter and it goes hello world and uh, for the longest time ever I had no idea how this works like what's the mechanism behind it I thought it like does eval which invokes JavaScript dynamically uh, it doesn't and uh, it took me a lot, a lot of time to understand how it uh, works and then I, I went to test him and we used the debugger protocol for a, a ton of things uh, so I figured how it works so what happens when you press a command in the DevTools and the DevTools has superpowers, right? So if it was just eval, you couldn't do stuff like get event listeners, which returns all the event listeners that something has in uh, JavaScript. Or uh, like run the profiler from the DevTools. And uh, you can, uh, for example, enter like uh, an element into a hover state and say uh, this element has, uh, this element is now hovered. Uh, and do a, a bunch of really cool things that are not actually uh, possible in plain JavaScript. So the DevTools has superpowers, uh, somehow this has to work, and it can't just be running regular JavaScript in our page, that doesn't work. So how does it work? So basically the DevTools is its own Chrome extension, and uh, that Chrome extension talks over WebSocket uh, with the page itself, the, the page context, uh, and the different parts of the page context in Chrome, uh, some of which we'll go into. Uh, so uh, this is the actual architecture, of the of the thing, and we'll go through this pretty quickly, and then go through some uh, actual use cases and things you can do in your code uh, with the DevTools protocol. So you have the console itself. That's the console prompt that talks to the model uh, of the console internally in the DevTools, and everything here lives in the Chromium repo, which is open source, and you can uh, look at yourself. Uh, that talks to the debugger uh, inside the DevTools front end, which is the extension. Uh, that talks to the inspector backend, which is the DevTools uh, wrapper for the uh, protocol. And that talks to Chrome uh, via WebSocket, and then crosses the JavaScript to C++ boundary. Uh, that goes to a debugger file, uh, which is generated from the protocol. The protocol is defined in a JSON file, which we will go over. And that actually talks to, for example, in this case, uh, V8, which is the JavaScript engine, for those of you who don't know, who uh, powers uh, Chromium. So Chromium is uh, very uh, componentized. You can take different parts of it. And uh, Chromium is the open source project that powers Chrome. And Chromium is built from many different parts. And uh, V8, for example, the, the, the whole code that does the, uh, the inspector uh, is, is shared, for example, between Node.js and, and, and uh, Chrome. Uh, because you can just take different parts out of uh, Chromium and use them in your own uh, projects. And you can actually embed V8 in your own project. It's, it's not that... Uh, it, it's a bit scary the first time, because Google has their own uh, tooling for all, all the different things, and uh, you need to get used to their tooling, but it's not uh, really that advanced. And the reason we can't do evil is because... Uh, scoping, basically. Uh, you need to run the code in a specific uh, frame, and eval has, like, for example, if you move to a different iframe and uh, you need to do th stuff across uh, frames, and like we said, it has superpowers. Right, so like we said, it's a Chrome extension. It lives in the Chromium repo. 
Uh, and the source code is accessible. There's actually instructions for hacking on it in the repo. You can go there. And funnily enough, it's not like a markdown document. It points you to like a Google doc that I think Paul wrote in 2015 or something. And there's basically instructions like clone this repo, run this mock server for working on the dev tools. And you can actually, I think I mean, maybe I'll even show this. You can go to the dev tools themselves like this. And then you can open the dev tools for the dev tools. And then you can open the dev tools for the dev tools for the dev tools. And every time you do that, it opens a WebSocket and another like uh, instance of the extension. And and for some reason there's logs for like how long things took to load, but basically it's just like an extension that loads an extension that loads an extension and all of that. Right. So how does it work? There's the console prompt that checks that an enter has been uh, entered. Funny funny sentence. And uh, that just like appends the command. That goes from the uh, prompt to the model that says, evaluate this command. I want to see what happens, uh, which, uh, and, and again, you don't really have to uh, understand all this code. I'm just going through it quickly to get to the uh, protocol stuff. Uh, that just, and, and this is real code from the DevTools front end, which you can get by, there is actually a mirror on GitHub because Chromium is such a big project that contains just the part of the of Chromium that is the DevTools. If you want to uh, start playing with that instead of playing with the whole uh, Chromium source and you, so, sorry, that does uh, evaluate uh, to the console model. And that does uh, this magic thing. So those of you who don't know, in JavaScript, you can define dynamic object keys. And that lends itself pretty well. They did something different in the C++ side, but that lends itself pretty well to uh, this sort of thing where you take like a JSON file and you want to create a function for everything there. So in this case, they create a function called evaluate on call frame. And that takes an expression in JavaScript and a call frame, which I omitted for brevity, and it runs the expression in that specific frame, like a specific uh, uh, stack frame. And there's some error handling and remote object handling. And that goes to invoke, which basically just sends a WebSocket message. So whenever you press enter in the DevTools, that sends a WebSocket message, which on one hand is, is kind of bad because it means uh, there is a, like pot a potential for latency. But uh, in practice, the DevTools is plenty fast. And the cool thing about this, it means that, I don't know if anyone here ever did this, but you can debug Chrome remotely. You can be on one device and debug Chrome on another device. Or you can, be on a, uh, you can run Node in a production server, in a Kubernetes cluster, in a container, and debug it like all the way from your, uh, uh, your file. And that just sends a raw message. Now, uh, yeah, that's the actual router. Every single command. Uh, you can use in the Chrome DevTools is defined in the file called protocol.json. And if you go to the uh, Chromium repo, you can actually see that file. Like if you have, uh, you just go to protocol.json and it's a huge file, so hopefully it will work. No, sorry, that's, uh, that's not the one to one. Uh, let's do, that's 1.3. So that's a version. And every single command uh, that exists in Chrome, uh, in the Chrome DevTools, the way Chrome talks to the DevTools is here. So for example, if you go to evaluate on call frame, evaluate, let's just do evaluate. That's okay, that's just the browser protocol probably. Yeah, that's the render inspector. Uh, let's look for evaluate. Or maybe we'll go to, let's do the viewer. So there is a viewer for the JSON file, the Chrome DevTools protocol viewer, which is also available on GitHub, which is a nice interface over uh, the, dev, uh, like the DevTools protocol, and it just shows everything there. So if you look to e for evaluate or evaluate on call frame, which is what happens when you press enter, uh, you can go here and you see all the parameters it takes. So the, the important one is the expression, uh, which is what you evaluate. And it's just like a really simple uh, WebSocket protocol. It's all JSON. And the, the only thing it does, it sends, a, it sends a message over that WebSocket, waits for the response, and then sends the response back over the WebSocket. And this is the DevTools protocol viewer, which uh, you can see on GitHub, and it also works offline, which is cool, but and very uh, Chrome-like. Uh, right, so that's the, that's the JavaScript part. The JavaScript part is basically just the UI for the console, and then the code that does, uh, like, contains the model for whatever the console is running, and then the backend part that just communicates with the WebSocket. So there is very little actual JavaScript processing uh, done in the Chrome DevTools, and I think it's uh, intentional. Now, on the other side, there is a file, uh, there's a file uh, containing something called a dispatcher. A dispatcher is basically just a long list of all the commands that the DevTools can take, and it's actually generated from the JSON file. So let's say you have the command debugger.evaluate on call frame. That contains uh, an implementation on, that's generated from the parameters 
in the Chrome side, and it's like a function call map that says when debugger.evaluate on call frame is called, call this command. And this is true for uh, every single command. You have like set breakpoint, you move breakpoint, and you can actually, it's a fun exercise. Uh, you can ping Chrome at the URL to tell it open the debugger, and then you can send it a message telling it, uh, hey, uh, set the breakpoint here, uh, stop execution, and all those things. And that goes and uh, talks to the V8 uh, inspector backend, and which is just does evaluate on call frame there. That's not a generated file, and uh, that actually goes to V8. That's the JavaScript engine and does evaluate, which is a command in C++ that says uh, take this isolate. Isolate is the name for a runtime environment that contains like JavaScript execution and the heap, like the memory the isolate has. Uh, because JavaScript doesn't have shared memory across uh, isol like isolates or threads or whatever, except like very specific cases, and run this expression. And throw on side effects is a, a diff different thing. Let's ignore it for now. And it just runs the code at the WebSocket and, and does things uh, with it, returns it on the WebSocket, uh, and does uh, dispatch uh, to event listeners, which just means I want I want to see what uh, what we got on the this is already JavaScript again, and it does print result. So this cycle happens every every time you do uh, evaluation in the DevTools. And if I open the DevTools here and I do like uh, console.log, uh, hello world, and I press enter, uh, it will go through the web, like every single, I can actually do this actually. I, I didn't think about it before, but if I go here, I can maybe refresh this. No, that's, that's not going to let me. Oh, that's the bundled, and I can go here and see. Uh, no, it's not gonna let me do that. I can see all the code it's loading. Uh, probably not gonna do that live. All right. So uh, the evaluation result is printed. So basically, everything you see in the DevTools works this way. When you call profiler, um, the profiler works this way. The performance works this way. And whenever they add a new tab to the Chrome DevTools, uh, with certain exceptions, uh, that's how it works. It goes and talks over the uh, debugger protocol. Uh, now, there is actually another way where you can run the protocol, that's uh, chrome.debugger.attach, uh, which only works in Chrome extensions, and that connects the protocol in a different way, but uh, we'll maybe go into this later. Right, so that's basically uh, how the DevTools work. They, it's a WebSocket protocol, you send a JSON f uh, from your browser to the um, page, like from the DevTools to the page, and you get a response back. So why do we care? Other than the, I think there's something wrong with the screen. Just a second. I'm not sure what the white bar is. No, never mind. So wh why do we even care that the DevTools works this way? Why, other than that it's cool and interesting to understand how the browser works internally? So there is a uh, Selenium. Who here has uh, used or uh, used Selenium or heard of Selenium? Right. So pretty much everyone. Who here has used Puppeteer? Right, so a, a bunch, not, not as many. And has anyone heard about Testim? It's a startup I work for, so I guess not, not that many of you yet. Uh, and I want to talk about the internals of how, how these tools work, how Selenium works and how Puppeteer works and a bit about how Testim works. And basically, Selenium is the most popular automation tool and for good reason, because it works in a lot of places. And Selenium itself is basically just a specification, right? It's not, there is no actual, there is very little code that actually lives in Selenium. Basically, there is this thing called the Web Automation Protocol or the JSON Wire Protocol that's just like a, a REST API where you just make an HTTP request saying, give me a Selenium session. And then Selenium gets that back and gives you a session. And then you tell it, click this element or, or find this element by some uh, something. And all it does is, uh, is an HTTP server. You don't actually need anything other than Chrome in order to talk to Chrome in a Selenium way. You can uh, start, you can build Chrome driver, which is the driver uh, that is actually the HTTP server. And the, all that does is it, it opens an HTTP server at some port you tell it, uh, typically 4444, but it can be any port. And when it's, it contains a bunch of commands like when you get a command for this uh, session at this element, run this C++ code. Now, does anyone here know how uh, Selenium does clicking on an element? Right, so it, it's not something people talk about a lot. It used to be different in Selenium 1, they changed it. But in, in essence, everything, like, when, when you do a, a click in Selenium, 
it does uh, mouse move, mouse press, and mouse release, and then just sends it over the uh, debugger protocol. So a, a, a debugger protocol, uh, what what a Chrome driver does essentially is it opens its own WebSocket connection into Chrome, the same way the DevTools does, and it executes the exact same code. So the way Selenium works is basically there's the language bindings, so that's like your uh, Python bindings or JavaScript bindings or whatever. That talks over REST API with Chrome driver, and Chrome driver talks over WebSocket to uh, Chrome's debugger.htp. Uh, it's, it's the same code. So if you want to do like an evaluate, that does the exact same thing that doing an evaluate in, uh, in uh, the DevTools does which has an advantage uh, because it means it's easy to debug, right? There, there's, there are very few cases. I don't think Selenium is easy to debug in general, but in, 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 in this term, uh, it, you get reproducible uh, uh, results because you do what you evaluated in Selenium, uh, you type it in the DevTools and you get the same result because both work on the DevTools protocol. And, uh, and this is how Selenium works. Now, Selenium also has dr other drivers for uh, IE and Firefox and Safari, and all those work differently. Like the, the, IE, the IE driver, for example, does something completely different. It does something with COM. Uh, I won't get into it. But the Chrome driver uh, just plays the same game the, play the DevTools does. It just connects into this debugger protocol and runs things, uh, which is nice. So what about Puppeteer? So Puppeteer is a test automation tool developed by uh, Google. And it's, it's, uh, it's kind of nice. It has a very modern and clean API, and it's, it's stable. Now, uh, it's not stable in that it will always select the same element when you change the page. It's stable in that if you say click something, you, you don't get uh, uh, flakiness with Puppeteer. And the reason uh, you, you get way less flakiness with Puppeteer than with Selenium is that it's very tightly coupled. So a lot of times when we talk about software, we say that tight coupling is bad because you want things to be able to change uh, irrespective of each other. But tight coupling also means to get very, uh, things that are, uh, work very well with each other in certain cases. And Puppeteer is only guaranteed to work with the version of Chromium uh, that it was built against and the same protocol version. And there's, there are several versions of the protocol I showed you. And Puppeteer works on something called the tip of toe. It works with the latest, absolute latest cutting edge uh, protocol. Uh, and, and when Puppeteer needs a new feature, they add the code to Chrome and then they add it to the, to the map and call it, on the other, uh, call it on the other side of Puppeteer. So it's just like a, a Node.js file and there is actually a, a Node.js program that opens the WebSocket connection to Chrome's debugger.cpp, uh, so dot .cc. So it's uh, the same uh, the same thing as a uh, as Chrome driver. Chrome driver is not JavaScript code. It's it's actually that could be a really nice project. Someone to rewrite a uh, Chrome driver in a Node or something else. But it's it's uh, not a C++ here. It's it's Node, and there's actually a port of Puppeteer to uh, C Sharp. If anyone is doing C Sharp, uh, and I think some other ports. And Puppeteer, actually, actually, they have a project where they run the same protocol on Firefox, so it also works on Firefox, but it's a, it's a very simple architecture. So when you do a click, like the, an element.click in Puppeteer, that just does a mouse down, mouse move, and mouse up, which just does input.dispatch mouse event. So Puppeteer and uh, Selenium, except for this delay thing, which I don't know why they added, but they did, does exactly the same thing that Selenium does. So the only difference in a click between Puppeteer and Selenium is that in, in Puppeteer, your code just opens a WebSocket to the DevTools. It sends a, a move a down and an up. And if there is a delay, it passes a delay. And in Selenium, it sends an HTTP request to a server that does exactly the same thing, right? So this code, the, the move down and up, and this code, uh, the move press and release, do exactly the same thing. And it makes sense because you want automation to be predictable. So this is what Puppeteer does, which is what Selenium does. So uh, I work for a company called Testim. I'll maybe show a demo uh, in some slide. And uh, obviously it's the best tool because I work on it, so I have to say it's the best. Uh, and we pretty much do exactly the same thing, right? And if you look at other automation tools like Test Cafe, uh, they, they all do, they all work with the DevTools protocol because it's the low-level interface of doing uh, stuff you're not supposed to do in JavaScript in JavaScript. It, there is, uh, it, it's the thing that's giving you capabilities you don't typically have uh, to, for your code. 
And basically, we do input dot dispatch mouse event, and we have a lot of code that deals with uh, uh, stabilization, like making sure things aren't flaky. And uh, we have, uh, and 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 we're also doing it in a pretty tightly coupled. Uh, and basically, this is uh, like a, a quick uh, GIF of what it, what it does. You basically just enter things on your page, and we record it, and then uh, we play it back to you in a stable way. And instead of selecting everything in one way, you select everything in like a, a million different ways, so your test doesn't break. And we, whenever you run the test again, we use like uh, this uh, machine learning algorithm for uh, detecting when things changed, and uh, and we improve the test. So w when you run your tests more, instead of being less stable, they are more stable. That's like the product, and it works exactly the same way. Like uh, it, it's similar to how Lighthouse works. If anyone saw it, it does like auditing, or how the DevTools works. Uh, we just it's just a Chrome extension that connects to the Chrome debugger. Uh, and okay, so now we talked a bit about what automation tools do, and they all pretty much do uh, the same thing, with the exception of Selenium that does an extra step of an HTTP server, uh, which I think isn't great, but it's uh, it's common like the, the, the architecture. And there are two primary ways from Chrome to access the DevTools. One way is to uh, do it from like an extension, uh, and that has a special API called chrome.debugger.attach. And the other way is do it from, uh, from the console. That's like uh, you open a WebSocket from another uh, process, and that's like what Puppeteer does. So Lighthouse, for example, connects to Chrome from the inside, and uh, there is a slightly different code uh, for what the DevTools can and can do in this uh, scenario, but it's it's mostly the same. And uh, Puppeteer, for example, talks to the DevTools from the outside. The reason a test team we talk to the DevTools from the inside is because there is no uh, latency. Like, if you uh, write a Selenium script and you have 100 commands, and your server is in China, and your... Uh, uh, or, for example, your server is in California, and your, um, and your um, grid your Selenium grid is in China, you, you, you need to make a, a very slow uh, request in terms of latency uh, for every command. So if you have 100 commands, you have to pay the latency 100 times. And I if you run all the code inside an extension, you load the code once, and then everything runs on the same device, and it's a lot less uh, flaky. So th there are advantages to, connect to connecting from the inside. The advantage to connecting to the outside is that you can use uh, Selenium, which is the lingua fr uh, franca of test automation. Like e everything speaks Selenium, or the grid speaks Selenium, so it's very uh, easy to uh, to use compared to other alternatives. So, what can you even do with the dev tools? Like, uh, what can you do other than clicking? Because clicking you can do with Puppeteer and Selenium and, and most products. So there is a bunch of APIs that people don't actually talk about that Chrome like add and remove to do certain things. So, for example, uh, when you do a hover, the way uh, Puppeteer does it is that they, they dispatch a command that's called uh, a mouse move. It's what we saw from the click. And that causes it to hover over the element. But uh, when you do it from the DevTools, what it does, it does a css.force pseudo state. And that just like uh, causes the CSS hover selectors to match, which is uh, uh, better in certain cases. Uh, you can actually run the profiler uh, as part of your test suite, which is really nice, because you can uh, very easily, like if you're using Puppeteer or Selenium for automation, you can get a CDP session, and uh, you can just tell it, uh, I want to get uh, um, performance information, and that's just like another uh, command you send. And you can take uh, code coverage. Like uh, what people commonly do, they, u they use tools like um, um, Istanbul, Nick, uh, that uh, go and look at the coverage of their JavaScript code, but you can actually do that with the Chrome DevTools, and it will return an array of functions. I will show this later. You can get accessibility information, which is important for co uh, compliance and for knowing how your site works. You can clear the cache, which is a problem in tests sometimes, because otherwise you have to create a new browser every time. Uh, you can look at violations uh, for accessibility or things you're doing that is that is wrong, and you can do something cool called a set virtual time policy, where you can tell JavaScript timers how they work, uh, and you can do uh, things with location. There is uh, the, it's a big protocol. It's just some ideas for things you can use the protocol for. So how does it work? And we're gonna show this with Node, uh, but essentially. Everything uh, I'm, I'm doing here can be done in any program language. There is absolutely no reason you can't use this with Java. All these tools do, like Chrome Remote Interface, is open a WebSocket connection and talk over uh, uh, with JSON. 
So anything that does WebSockets and JSON, which is virtually every language today, uh, can use the DevTools protocol to connect to Chrome and do automation. So Chrome Remote Interface uh, is a very thin wrapper over the DevTools protocol. Every command translates to a DevTools protocol command, uh, which is, is nice. And the other thing I'm going to use is called uh, Chrome Launcher. Chrome Launcher is uh, just a, a small tool that launches Chrome. It makes sure like Chrome is running. And my code just does launch Chrome in headless mode, just so I don't get a browser. Launch uh, the DevTools protocol. This like makes a request to Chrome to open the debugger port, then connects to it. And then I get a session. So what can I do with this? One of the simplest things one can do is take a screenshot, right? So this, I went to devdays.lt uh, and I did page.capture screenshot, which again, I can just look at like if I go to the DevTools protocol, let's look at screenshot, I'll just look for it. And uh, capture screenshot, and that just gives me all the parameters it takes. So I can do like a JPEG and PNG, and I can pass a quality parameter, and I can give the viewport if I want to capture a specific thing. And it's a lot more uh, fine-grained, and like, it's a lot more granular than uh, doing it with, uh, usually with doing it with Selenium or Puppeteer, because you can specify a lot of different parameters that aren't exposed here. Uh, and you get back a, a base64 string. Uh, just a second, let me get back here. And I do fs.write file, and I do a buffer.from to convert the base64 string to a byte array, and I get this messy thing which isn't uh, really a very good screenshot because network hasn't finished yet. So tools like, like automation tools, what they tend to do is they tend to have this strategy where they decide when the page has uh, loaded. So there is very, there isn't a clear cut meaning to what the page is loaded means. That's essentially the problem. You can ask when the original scripts and images have loaded. You can ask when the uh, network has finished all the existing requests. Uh, and here is a little bit of code I wrote that just does something that's similar to what Puppeteer does. For example, by default, it's a strategy called network idle zero. And it waits for the page to uh, load by, um, Basically, looking at network requests, network.request will be sent. Again, if I want to look at the uh, how it works, I can do network request. Let's do request will be sent. And I can just look at all the parameters it takes. It takes like a, a thing that says that tells me uh, what parameter is that. And then I, I take a promise. The promise constructor lets me uh, construct a promise based on something that is not uh, already a promise. And after there isn't a request for two seconds, I, uh, I decide the page is loaded, and then I do capture screenshot. And that's how I can get the page to look uh, the way it does. So it's a very uh, low level. If you open Puppeteer, you can see the same, the exact same, uh, uh, it's not the exact same code, but it's very similar code for detecting when uh, things have loaded. Now, I basically wrote a quick utility library, and I will upload it in case anyone cares, that just starts uh, a cr an express server, uh, starts Chrome, and opens a DevTools connection to connect it to, and then it calls past code into it and lets me run arbitrary commands. And uh, for example, I can define a function here, like uh, Fibonacci, which is the best uh, function for demos. And uh, I, I can do runtime.evaluate for an expression and get the result back, uh, which is uh, useful. Now, I can do a lot of really cool things with the DevTools protocol. So doing any of the things above, like uh, coverage, you can do result uh, equals await profile to take precise coverage. Uh, ranges equals this uh, like finds a, a function and tells me what parts of the function are, are being called and how. And uh, the, the, the takeaway from, from this sort of thing is there's a lot of functionality that isn't exposed outside in Puppeteer because Puppeteer is written by people uh, that have different priorities than maybe your organization. And they are nice people, they really care about the web, they care about web performance, but they might do things differently. And you might end up using tools that take coverage that isn't as, for example, precise as uh, as uh, Chrome does, and Chrome already needs to be able to take coverage because the DevTools takes coverage. So a lot of times you will find things the DevTools do uh, that you are not sure how to test. And uh, like, who here likes the DevTools? Likes the fact they can uh, debug their code in a way that's uh, clear? I, I do. 
So the DevTools uh, expose a lot of functionality that uh, takes a lot of time to get to test automation tools. And you can use all that functionality today. Uh, now, this is a little bit unrelated to what I was talking about. If anyone wants to do open source, I'll, I'll uh, piggyback on this and uh, and talk to me. That's all I got. Thank you.